increase your metabolic rate, your BMR, and multiple facets because it's important to have a really healthy metabolism for stuff like weight loss or maintaining a healthy weight, but every single function, physiological function in your body is based off the metabolic interactions. And so everything from breathing to digestion to cellular repair to healing is part of this metabolic system. And so it's not just weight loss, even though that's a really big part of it, but it's about getting healthy. Uh, and you have to excuse me, I've never used my phone for a PowerPoint like this, but uh, I was having computer issues. So this is new to everybody. So cut me some slack, all right? Um, so on your note sheet, there should be the, the QR code. This is for our LRQ, it's a lifestyle questionnaire. If you can do me a favor, if you can open that real fast. I'm not necessarily gonna have you take it, but I just wanna make sure it works for everybody. I want you, this, is, this is something I want you to do later. This is really good. We started to implement this in a lot of our workshops and seminars. But if you answer these different questions, it'll really kind of give you a snapshot of where you're at with your overall health. But it'll also show some recommendations on what aspects of the five essentials that we need to address to make sure you're moving into an appropriate direction with your health. So it should actually give you a readout and a guide of where you're at and what things we need to work on moving forward. Is it open for everybody? What's that? I was just making sure it opened for everybody. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, they're opened up. Okay, now phones away so you can pay attention. <laughs> so our mission um, is really to empower people to live a longer, healthier life through the chiropractic care and integration of the five essentials. I and mean, one of the reasons we do these sort of events is because we understand how sick we are and how much people are really searching for answers and solutions. And ultimately, that's what our purpose is, is to help give you solutions to implement health strategies, not just end up sick, fat, and nearly dead, stuck in the medical gauntlet, being told that you have to be taking more drugs or you have to have more surgeries just to make it through the day. So we're gonna give real health solutions by providing true health care and showing you how to actually improve your health, not just fight disease. Um, me and my wife, Dr. Jill, she's in the back, if anybody wants to wave there. We've been on this mission. We had our 11 year birthday. Our office had our 11 year birthday just last uh, last January. So we've been doing this for a while. Before that, we both had opportunities to train in some of the largest wellness centers across the country. Um, in fact, in school and out of school, we both did max living uh, training programs so we could open up offices like this and deliver this kind of care. And this is why we have easily one of the largest chiropractic offices in Oklahoma. But understanding your metabolism is so much more than just weight loss. It, it is all metabolic functions, including things like your, your immune function, breathing, digestion, and even cellular repair. So it's talking about breaking food down, digesting that food, and turning it into energy. So, like I just said, more than just your metabolism for weight loss. But this is kind of scary. So getting some, some just interesting statistics, like learning and, and prepping for this, but 80% of Americans suffer from metabolic disease. And most of them have no idea. So even just like being a little overweight or having a little bit of fatigue. So here's just some of the metabolic disorders, but here's some of the different symptoms. Let me go backwards a little bit. But even just having a little bit of fatigue or a little bit of thyroid issue or suppressed appetite, cold hands, feet, low libido, PMS or bloating, anxiety, depression, hair loss, beard loss, insomnia, infertility, irritability or obesity. All these things are just potential warning signs that you have or are building metabolic disease, and this is what those diseases are. High cholesterol, high heart disease. <laughs> Chiropractor's asking for adjustments right there. Uh, heart disease, they have to weigh like everybody else. Heart disease, obesity, diabetes, autoimmune, thyroid dysfunction, uh, PCOS, infertility, Cushing disease, cancer, fatty liver disease, arthritis, chronic pain. That's a big list and there's a lot more. I mean, just, I want you to think about this, but do you know anybody that has any of these disorders? I mean, raise your hand if you know some, at least one person. My mom has one. Yeah, okay. So, it, it, so here's, this is kind of the crazy statistic. Right now, one out of two people, men and women, will have heart disease. One out of three women will have cancer, one out of two men will have cancer. 30% will have diabetes. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on, so it's really kind of scary to think about, but we always try to assume
assume that it's not going to be us. But you know what? Statistics show that it, it either is going to be us or it's going to be our spouse. That's just the statistics. Unless you do something radically different. And this is what leads to so much of this disease and disorders is just the standard American lifestyle. You've heard that saying, if you find yourself on the majority, you have to pause and reflect. This is where everyone else is. We have to live counterculture to this. We have to live the max living five essentials, not just what everybody else is doing, or we're gonna end up with the same results. Like everybody knows what the de definition of um, um, insanity. insanity. <laughs> yes, the definition right. of insanity is right. It's doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. Has anybody ever seen that documentary called Cut, Poison, Burn? We show that as a, as a movie night. We used to do movie nights way back in the day. Um, Cut, Poison, Burn. It's a really good example of what happens with the treatment of cancer patients. Who's known someone who's had cancer before? Did you guys know that most cancer comes back? Yes, right? If someone gets it cut out or burnt out or poisoned out, and it might lower a tumor load, and sometimes that stuff is necessary, sometimes Things like chemo are necessary. The way they do it is very incorrect. Has anybody, has anybody ever heard of a low-dose non-toxic chemo? No? Has anybody ever heard of uh, insulin-mediated chemo? When my mom was diagnosed with cancer and I was having a con conversation with her oncologist, I, it made me so upset. I felt like I knew more about cancer treatment than he did. Now, I've been doing cancer seminars for the last 10 years. My mentor was diagnosed with a stage four multiple myeloma with four different brain tumors and he beat it naturally. At the same time, another doctor in our network had been diagnosed with a stage four uh, skin cancer, which is deadly, and he beat it. And so we've been doing cancer seminars, but it was just interesting because when someone does one of those treatments and they get the cancer cut out or they poison out and they lower the tumor load and you're given a clean bill of health, or it, you, the problem is, is the cancer doesn't make you sick. It's your body being sick that builds the cancer. So if you are sick and you build cancer, and I take all of the cancer, I'm talking 100%, even like non-invasively, like magically removed all the cancer, what are you still left with? The same sick body that created the cancer. In fact, if I took your cancer out and I put it in his body that is healthy, because healthy bodies fight cancer, if I put his cancer in his body, what happens to cancer? It kills it. Because that's what healthy bodies do. We all have 10 to 10,000 cancer cells all the time. But if our bodies are healthy, our bodies are consistently killing those cancer cells. So instead of trying to fight the cancer, why don't we just try to turn the body healthy? Because healthy bodies fight cancer. And that's what our approach is. It's not treating disease. It's not treating this heart disease, cancer, diabetes. It's not treating any of those things. It's not treating weight loss resistance. It is trying to get the body so healthy that disease cannot exist. And that is what true healthcare is. That's not what happens in the medical system. And the medical system is all about treating symptoms, treating disease. They, might can they make cancer the enemy, right? In fact, back in the 1970s, they declared war on cancer. Do you remember that? They declared war on cancer, and cancer was the enemy. Cancer is your body. Cancer is your body's healing process if you really break it down. And so again, we don't want to treat disease. We don't want to live like everyone else. We have to live differently if we want a different outcome. True or true? True. Okay. Well, this is it. This is your roadmap to health. It's the five essentials. Every single health category under the sun falls under one of these five essentials. And that's what this office's real job is, is to help you live and implement these five essentials into your life so you can have that life of vitality and energy and chasing your grandkids down the beach when you're in your 80s or 90s, not stuck in a nursing home on a bunch of drugs. Now I'm gonna go through, uh, we, are gonna, we are gonna do a 30 day challenge for those who want to like have some um, camaraderie and really have a goal and to, to, to have us push forward, but we're gonna go through a 30 day challenge um, following this event for those that really want a new you or need that motivation or just wanna change. So your BMR, this is kind of like your thermostat, your basal metabolic rate. This is, this is, what, this is what, you, what kind of calorie you burn while at rest. 
So your basal, model, basal metabolic rate is just, this is what you burn while at rest. How many calories you need to consume just to live, okay? It, it, but it's always working, so your metabolism is always on. Breathing, circulating, digesting food, growing and repairing cells, managing hormones, regulating body temperature. So when, even when you're at sleep, your metabolism is working. Now, there's a difference, though, between having a fast metabolism and a slow metabolism. Right, that's a real thing. Do you have a slow metabolism? Well, we need to start to correct that. And this is some of the thing that would slow your metabolism. <coughs> Let me go back, the, the thermostat's a really good way or analogy to think about this. So if the, so the thermostat in your house is at 72, if you open the door and it's cold outside, what happens? The heat kicks off, right? Or if it's really hot outside and the door gets open, what happens? The air turns on because the house constantly, because that thermostat is sad, it's constantly trying to stay at that 72. Does that make sense? And so your basal metabolic rate is the same way. You probably notice that you kind of have like a comfortable weight. Like you kind of work out real hard or do this or do that, so you might lose a little bit of weight, but as soon as you stop like pedal to the metal, you go back to this like natural weight that your body has created. Has anybody ever felt that before? So the whole point of a lot of this when it comes to like as we're framing this in weight loss or increasing weight loss resistance is we're trying to raise your thermostat. So your basal metabolic rate, so what's your normal weight? That's what we're trying to change when it comes to the weight loss part of it. Does, does everybody get that analogy? Okay, so these are the things that can slow down your metabolism. Age, imbalance in your hormones, so insulin, leptin, ghrelin, and sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen. Stress, as, as, as far as creating stress hormones, not enough sleep, thyroid dysfunction, and leaky gut. These are things that we have to address to correct your metabolism and to avoid metabolic disease. Okay, so this is the thing that we're gonna frame this in. So again, you want a better metabolism, but don't know how, this is, this is really what would, so I'm gonna take a second and talk about insulin. Everybody heard of insulin before? This is a big part when it comes to weight loss and then trickle down disease from this. Because the same thing that would cause you to be overweight is the same thing that would lead to metabolic disease. Does, does everybody kind of get that? This is where like, I love health because it's so simple. Because the same thing I'm gonna teach someone to like reverse diabetes is the same kind of thing I would teach them to heal from cancer or to heal from weight loss resistance. Because it's all about just getting healthy. So it, the medical world tries to complicate things so much but at the end of the day, it really is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. So what causes insulin, what would cause insulin to go up or to have chronic high levels of insulin? Because you cannot, I repeat, you cannot, everyone say cannot. Cannot. Cannot burn fat in the presence of insulin. You cannot burn fat if your insulin is high, okay? So obviously carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates and sugars are what increase insulin the most. Now, just real quick, there was this thing, not that I watched like the Dr. Oz show very much, but they, I used this as an example because what they did was they had this group of women, they gave them a candy bar and they measured their glucose levels. And then they, I think it was the following day, they gave the same women a piece of whole grain wheat bread and they measured their glucose levels. Now you would assume what would spike their blood sugar the most. The candy. You would assume it was the candy bar. What was it actually? It was the bread. So don't think because you don't eat candy, you're not spiking your insulin levels like crazy. Protein, also, some proteins can have an increase in insulin, um, GI dysfunction, and then estrogen dominance. Again, these are things that we have to address to heal our metabolic dysfunction, okay? So what causes increased insulin? So we kind of talked about carbohydrates, some proteins, but this is ultimately what happens. You consume these carbs, they break down into sugar. Your body stores sugar for fuel as glycogen, okay? So you store sugar in two areas. You store sugar in your muscles and you store, a little, you store sugar in your liver. Now once those storage units get full, now it spills over and now you increase body fat. Okay, does, does, does everybody follow me with that? So when you increase the insulin um, and it gets too high and you're constantly overfilling those storage units, then it's gonna to turn into excess body fat and eventually fatty liver. Who's ever heard of fatty liver? When you think of fatty liver, what do you think of? Alcoholics. Most, 
the majority, far majority, I don't know if the stat is, but it's the far majority of liver transplants are from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And it's from too many carbohydrates. We live in a carbohydrate world and it is so terrible on your liver. In fact, this is crazy, juice, like orange juice, apple juice, cranberry juice or whatever, it's, it's a natural sugar, it's called fructose, but it, there's no fiber with it and it just goes right to your liver and it is just so terrible. Now, what's really scary is what age group drinks most juice? Now, just because they're young and they're really resilient and they feel like freaking crazy, it doesn't seem to hurt them, but it's really setting them up for a lot of failure as adults. Because what you did, and there's a lot that you can do to repair yourself, so I'm not like trying to like be doom and gloom, but where you're at now is really in all likelihood due to what was going on as a child good or bad, okay? But parents didn't know, like, you can't pick on parents because they didn't come to a workshop like this, but as, you, as you're here, and you know, if you have young kids or grandkids, you know, get, get your kids who have kids into workshops like this so they can start to learn how to just, how to make sure they're not damaging their kid, because no one would damage their kid knowingly, right? You would never want to do that. But if you don't know, you don't know. And then again, that's why right now, you look at the disease rates in kids, it's insane. Did you guys know this is the first time in human history where our children's uh, life expectancy is going down? Our children are said to live a shorter life expectancy than us. First time in human history. Because heart disease rates, cancer rates, diabetes rates, are all going where? Up, not down. Right now, one out of four children have a learning disability, one out of five are on a chronic medication they'll take for the rest of their life. Childhood obesity is through the roof. Okay, so the diseases and the diseases are just getting worse because we just, we're not, okay. So, and then it leads to inflammation, and that's when you're seeing all this disease trickle down. Okay, so fatty liver, brain fog, high insulin, um, creates muscle wasting, fat belly, so anytime you have like belly fat, typically that shows that you do have a fatty liver. Okay, any sort of abdominal fat, you have fatty liver. Uh, sleepiness after meals, high blood pressure, cravings, or hunger in between meals, those are all warning signs that you have insulin resistance to some degree. Okay, maybe not full blown diabetes, but you have insulin resistance if you have any of those symptoms. And then it leads to diabetes, and then it leads to heart disease, and then it leads to stroke, leads to kidney disease, because we have this all this pour over because it causes more protein breakdown. Your muscle wasting, the livers get, the kidneys get damaged, and then it's just, it's, it's a it, it, bad deal. Yes, yes? Okay, so we gotta make sure we're getting there. Now this is really interesting. Who's ever heard of the glycemic index? Okay, have you ever heard of the insulin index? Okay, so insulin index is kind of like your uh, sugar index, your, your glucose index, whatever. What did I say? Glycemic <laughs> index? Glycemic index. Yeah. Yes. Insulin index, so the percentage is how much it raises your insulin. Because remember, if your insulin gets increased at all, you instantly start storing fat. Okay, so just real quickly, and I'll put these into follow-up, like, um, put these into follow-up Facebook tech, uh, messages, and we're gonna have a special closed group for the challenge people, and then we also just have a regular closed group. Is anybody in the closed group, just in general, you're in the closed Facebook group? Okay, make sure you're in that, and then we're gonna set up a challenge group as well. So again, like look at potatoes, 121%. Yeah, whole wheat bread. Well, what's interesting too is, is look at, look at, um, look at, so here's the egg yolk, here's the egg white, or I'm sorry, here's the whole egg and then egg white sat there. Because they used to think that the egg white was the good part. Yeah. Right, because there's no, cholesterol in it. Now, I, I think that everybody kind of has gotten past that. Well, there's been some, a lot of bad information when it comes to nutrition out there, hasn't there? Okay. So, fire up the metabolism. So again, we have to address all those things. We have to address hormonal imbalances. What's training is insulin levels. What's training the leptin resistance. Leptin is the brain, is the hormone that tells the brain released by the fat to burn fat. So if you have body fat, your body will release leptin. Your brain says, oh, I hear you leptin. Now we're going to burn fat. The problem is if you constantly have body fat or an excess of body fat and you're constantly releasing these leptin hormones, you become leptin resistant. Who's sort of insulin resistant? Okay, your cells no longer hear the insulin so it stops putting the sugar in the cell so then it goes into 
liver damage, blah, blah, blah. You become insulin resistant so your body no longer hears you're wanting to burn fat. Can't burn fat if you're leptin resistant, okay? So you have to regulate and heal from that, increase leptin sensitivity, as well as you have to heal the gut, you have to heal the thyroid. And you can have a, a combination of all of those. You could have way more gut issues, you could have way more thyroid issues, or you could just have insulin hormonal issues, right? And that leads to low testosterone, all sorts of stuff. So here's the solutions, okay? We're gonna talk about number one, we're gonna talk about nutrition. Everybody gets that nutrition is a big part of healing insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity, so we have increased insulin sensitivity. So we're talking about nutrition. We're talking about nutrition when it comes to the advanced plan, okay, and I'll kind of walk you through that. We're gonna talk about the very specific supplements that are gonna aid, that are gonna aid with this, increased insulin sensitivity. I'm gonna give you some, some, some food tips. I'm gonna talk about some intermittent fasting. Okay, who's ever heard of intermittent fasting? Okay, and then we're gonna talk about specifically things like exercise, what kind of exercise. Okay, and then I'll talk about healing the gut, healing the thyroid. Fair enough? Everybody buckle up? Okay, all right, so now I will give you additional information on this stuff specifically, okay? But the advanced plan is gonna be your roadmap to healing. This used to be called the healing diet, okay? It is designed to do these things. It is designed to burn fat, detoxify, reduce inflammation, and balance those hormones that I talked about. Your leptin, your insulin, okay, ghrelin. Now this is what the advanced plan is. It's eliminating all grains, so no sugars. Okay, increasing your healthy fats, remove damaged fats, fix your proteins, and then you can consume on the advanced plan low glycemic index fruit, berries, Granny Smith apples. Okay, what's the other one? I don't like grapefruit. Grapefruit. Oh. No. <laughs> But okay, so now with this, so okay, so with the challenge group, okay, okay, we're gonna just purchase these or whatever. But in the challenge group, um, if you have uh, got a ticket, if you if, oops, anyway, we have some <laughs> quick start guide to nutrition and then the recipe book, okay. Mm -hmm. So those are resources as well. Okay, now I will say this: if you are not taking a multivitamin as an adult, you're being irresponsible. Okay, you have to be taking a multivitamin. The nutrition in food is so minimized that you are not getting enough nutrients, minerals in food in general, okay? A cup of spinach 50 years ago has as much iron as, a, as 50 cups of spinach today. The soil depletion in our nutrients, it's crazy. So if you're not taking a good multivitamin, you're being irresponsible. And if you're not giving your kid a multivitamin, you're being even worse, okay? So this is the essential packet. This is what I'm gonna recommend to everybody to take. Uh, it comes in a packet, so it's really easy to take. Like, I always take it with me. Um, but it has your multivitamin, it has your B-complex, has your magnesium, it has your uh, uh, omega, and it has your D. D. Thank you very much. These are the five what I call non-negotiable. All the other supplements you can take when you need or in cycles, but these are the five non-negotiables that you should be taking every single day. Okay? So, who's ever heard of keto? What is keto known for? <laughs> Losing weight. Oh. <laughs> it is like known to lose weight. So why is that? But what does that do? It shifts your metabolism into utilizing fat for fuel. Because if you're consuming carbohydrates, you're a carbohydrate burner. It's just, it's faster, it's easier to break down, okay? But when you start to shift your metabolism to utilize fat for fuel, you're going into ketosis, it's just, it's a cleaner energy, it's a better energy. For those that go on to keto, typically it's things that you notice, you have more energy, better mental clarity, you don't need caffeine as much. I mean, there's all sorts of amazing benefits besides weight loss for keto. The problem, can anybody tell me what the problem with keto is though? The quality of the food? Yep, most people do it wrong. Yeah. It just, it's, they focus on macronutrients and not quality of food. And so that's where it's called like dirty keto, okay? So what we want to do with our Max Living Advanced Plan is it's similar when it comes to macronutrient breakdown, but it's going to be about healthy foods because healthy fats are anti-inflammatory. Healthy fats are anti-inflammatory. So you have to be very specific about what kinds of and what qualities of foods you're using. Okay, but it is a, it's a low sugar, higher fat type of diet because we have to heal our hormones. We have to heal ourselves. We have to heal our inflammation. Okay. So calories, not a calorie. 
So 200 calories of broccoli versus 200 calories of peanut butter, even though it's the same amount of calories, they're very, very different in the phytonutrients, okay? Because if you eat a spoonful of peanut butter versus an entire blade of, a plate of broccoli, which one's more filling? Yeah, you technically get full off of nutrients, not off of calories. That's why you can eat a 2,000 calorie fast food McDonald's kids meal in an hour you're like starving because there's no nutrients in there. You're not, you don't get full off of calories, you get full off of nutrients. Does that, make, does that make sense? So calorie is not a calorie. It's quality of the calories. Now here's the advanced planning grocery shopping list. I'm gonna give this guys to you. I'll, I'll put it in the, I'll see, I'll put it in the group that we're gonna do the challenge through. Uh, but also put it on the main group as well. Or you can request for an email. Oh, so, you know how in PowerPoints you have animations where like things pop up? <laughs> Apparently that's happened in your food. <laughs> so technically this just says fat does not make you fat. Because fat's got a bad rap, right? When you go to the grocery store, most of the like healthy options are called what? <laughs> fat free or low fat or no fat, which is insane because back in the day when they decided to do this huge marketing thing, they took all the fat out and what did they put in? Sugar. sugar. So guess what exploded when some people started to follow those recommendations? Heart disease, cancer, diabetes, through the roof. Okay? So fat doesn't make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. But it's the body's inability to burn fat that makes you fat. Does that make sense? The body's inability to burn fat makes you fat, not, not that fat makes you fat. So, question. When, when you're looking at uh, not the ingredients, but like the, like the health, for example, uh -huh. when you see something So, and that's where we gotta get real careful too because when you look at that specific part of the back label or whatever, it can be very misleading because they can change all sorts of serving sizes. So I'd rather you look at ingredients. Like what's it made of? Like what's in it? Like what's the ingredients of an apple? Yeah. An apple, what's the ingredients of like a kid's meal? Like like a, what are those uh, <laughs> what are those things you peel off back in the day to eat? Lunchables. Lunchables, yeah. Like there's like a hundred different chemicals. No, not my Lunchables. <laughs> yes, it is. Now here's the thing is like, they actually do make healthy Lunchables though. Like that's a real thing. They actually do make those. You just gotta know where to get them and buy them and all that sort of stuff. Does that make sense though? So fat doesn't make you fat. It's your body's inability to burn fat that makes you fat. Okay? So that's why we have to shift our body into a fat burning machine. So in fact, um, protein is a really, so when you're doing like the advanced plan, you have a little bit higher source of protein. Protein is actually a thermogenic food, meaning it actually takes more calories to burn protein than consume. So it's kind of cool. Your actual body is burning more calories to break down the protein than it is to like store. So protein is really good. It increases calories out. Now, not all protein is the same. Okay, so you ever heard that saying, "You are what you eat"? Okay, the actual saying is, "You are what you ate meat." Okay, it's the quality of the food because ultimately. If the food you're consuming is commercial beef or it, 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 they're full of steroids and hormones and antibiotics and they're fed GMO grain or GMO corn and they're, all, they're, in, they're super, super inflamed because they're eating all this inflammatory food, then you consume that, you're consuming all those toxins, all those poisons, all the pesticides, herbicides, suicides that they're putting on all that food. So you're consuming a sick, diseased animal, so guess what you've become? Sick and diseased. Okay, in fact, the omega ratio for a grass-fed, grass-finished cow is like two to one, two to four, the omega ratio. That's what we should be. A commercial beef is like one to 25, one to 50, it's like a walking heart attack. Okay, so make sure you're getting, you know, if you're gonna invest one penny into better nutrition, don't buy organic produce, buy organic grass-finished meat because it's toxic accumulation. Now you also have the clean 15 versus the dirty dozen. Anybody know what that is? Okay, it's the stuff that's really high pesticide load versus stuff that you don't need to buy organic. Like you don't need to buy organic avocados, but you have to buy organic strawberries or apples or grapes because there's no shell, all the pesticides right on the skin. skin. Yeah, and you're consuming the skin. So anything you're eating the skin of, you need it to be organic. What, what's the, you, you were saying grass finished. Grass finished. What is the difference between 30%. Grass-fed is 30% grass-fed. Grass-finished 
the base 100 percent grass fed. So when you're when you're at you know wherever looking at instead of grass fed, grass fed, yeah, it could just be a marketing ploy. The last 90 days, sorry, the last 90 days, so they'll grass feed, and then the last 90 days they'll take them and feed them only grains to fatten them and make them bigger. So it's grain finished. So you want grass finished. So the yeah. grass fed, it's just fed grass until like the last 90 days at right. most. And then the last <clears throat> 90 days is all grain. So will it say grass finished on yes. like the label? Yes. That is smart. Yeah. And like, there's like, um, uh, I believe Butcher Box is grass finished. It's like a delivery mm -hmm. or whatever. So, okay. so, you, are, and so you, you are what you eat. So here's just a couple real quick tips as far as like increasing your insulin sensitivity, okay? Um, apple cider vinegar drinks, does anybody do those? Okay, you should start doing those every single day. In fact, you can even do it a couple times a day. Now, if you really don't like the taste, you need to water it down a ton. Or you can put stevia in it, okay? You can put some stevia in it, okay? But lemon, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, well, technically it's supposed to be two spoons, like two tablespoons and eight ounces. But you can decrease that as you acquire your taste. Can you make uh, like a gummy snack or do you need You could probably do that. I don't know. It depends if there's any sugar. If that's only, but so here's the thing though, like you can consume some sugar. I'm not saying you can't consume sugar. It depends on how, how, like how insulin resistant you are, like how much you can allow yourself to have or how, what your goal is. Like, I mean, if you're trying to heal from cancer, then the answer is no, you know? But if you're just trying to lose a little bit of weight, then yeah, that's probably okay, right? Does it make sense? Um, if you put cayenne pepper in that, it, it, that's a thermogenic food as well, so it'll increase your metabolism. Uh, fermented foods, because it will heal the gut, but it is also great for reducing insulin sensitivity, or increasing insulin sensitivity. High potassium, vitamin B complex is really important, okay? Um, increased fiber, healthy fats, lowering cortisol, healing your estrogen dominance, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, which is in removing estrogen mimickers. Uh, increasing your sleep, uh, specific kinds of exercise, lots of dark green leafies, reduce your caffeine by half, if not all. Mm. That's why I said half. That's why I said half. <laughs> so you're messing with my caffeine and melanin. But if you're eating healthy, you won't need it. So you know, so like, who's ever done a caffeine detox? Just who loves caffeine but has done a caffeine detox? Blasphemy. <laughs> Only one person. It hurts for a week. And then what happens? Then you don't need it. Yeah, then you don't need it. So I've done caffeine. Like so, this was okay. I do self challenges to build discipline. So I will do like no caffeine this week, or you know no alcohol through January or whatever it is. Like, so like self-discipline just to build a disciplined muscle so that way when it comes to challenge or something like that, then it's easier to do, right? I don't know if anybody else likes to do those things, but like it's small things that aren't very difficult, like journal every day for a week, mm -hmm. right? It's just little disciplines that can build your disciplined muscle. So anyway, that's just a side note. Um, so if you're, if you're, so here's some really things that you're gonna love, 36 hour fast. How would you do like the high potassium, would that be by a supplement or with yeah, I would, food? Yeah, I, I, well, you could do food, but you have to do the food without sugar, so bananas. Because my brain went through bananas. Yeah, high sugar, yeah. So it would be through a supplementation, most likely. 36-hour um, fast. Curcumin, it helps with decreasing inflammation, it helps with uh, fat oxidation, I believe, and then cold water therapy. Oh, no. Ice bath. No. Okay. All right, so you can do the ice bath to keep your coffee. I got a, I got a buddy that I played baseball with in college, and he's from Canada, and he's got, has everybody heard of Wim Hof? Wim Hof is like the cold therapy, like he's who like made it a thing. Anyway, this guy every day goes out, cuts a hole in the ice, and gets in the water. Canada, right? So it's all frozen tundra. And he gets in it for seven minutes every day. Oh my God. Yes or no? 
Anyway, he puts videos on, on, on Facebook all the time. It's just awesome. It's just, that's just, anyway, very, very good for you. I mean, you guys have heard of Polar Plunge, right? Yeah. Huge health benefits. Anyway, that's part of why. Uh, okay, meta, meta, uh, metabolism boosting foods broccoli, salmon, berries, ginger, green tea, lemon, almond. So, part of this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this here in a second, but it's doing one or two protein shakes a day and making sure you are taking your supplements. Okay? If you are not, if you do not do the essential bundle, like it's just you got to get there. Okay, power of, of, of hydration. I had a patient do a big glass of clean water with lemon in it every morning, and in a week lost nine pounds because you are flushing the system. You are increasing your body's natural detoxification processes by hydration. If you are not hydrating, you are just, it's like oil, it's like clogging up and like things just aren't functioning properly. So hydration is, is, is critical. Does lemon break the fasting? No, it does not. I'm gonna talk about that though. Okay, um, okay. so intermittent fasting. Who's ever heard of intermittent fasting? Who's ever tried intermittent fasting? What was, what was like the hardest part of intermittent fasting? What kind of intermittent fasting did you do? Did you do a, just a 16-8? Where you like miss breakfast, or did you do like one day off, three days on, one day off, three days on, or did you do like a three day off? So I did mine Monday through Friday, and I wouldn't eat until noon, and then I wouldn't eat anything past eight o'clock. Monday, Monday, Monday through, through Friday. Friday. Monday, just like work days, and then on the weekend. I remember that week you were. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <Yeah. okay. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> don't do I don't do very well without food. So. <laughs> okay, so okay. Here's the reason. If someone has a hard time intermittent fasting and they become all of the above nasty words, it is because their blood sugar is like all over the place. So they do not have very good control over their blood sugar regulation. So they, they don't, their insulin sensitivity to the blood sugar is all over the place. Okay, so that's something that needs to be addressed. If you are trying to intermittent fast and you are not real fat adaptive or your blood sugar is all over the place, there's a couple things you have to do. One of them is correct your nutrition first. Okay, that's following the advanced plan. That's doing all those little things we talked about. Try to become a little bit more fat adaptive. Because if you are fat adaptive and you remove the food you, and you have body fat to spare, you have all the stored energy. Like that's what it is. This is stored energy. And your body should be able to utilize it unless you're locking it away. Does that make sense? Like. This is, who's ever seen like a picture come up, and I see this on Facebook sometimes, but they'll show a picture of like the 1970s or the 1950s, mm -hmm. like a, a, a street in New York. There's not a single person that is overweight. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, okay. So the things that have happened over the last year, so that's a natural, that's, that's nature, that's natural, that's what we should look like. But because of the lifestyles, the stressors, the poor foods, the, the toxicity, it changes and morphs our body into like just an increased fat store. Okay, so it's just it, having all this access stuff is not natural. Right. Okay, so benefits of intermittent fasting, increased cognitive function, who could use that a little bit? I've talked to you, I know you could probably. <laughs> okay, increased weight loss, uh, increased weight loss, increase your basal metabolic rate, increased insulin sensitivity, that's not high insulin sensitivity. <laughs> increased stem cell growth, increased apoptosis, who knows what apoptosis is? Increased cell death. When your cells get damaged and your cells start to mutate, they become cancer cells. And they do not go through a normal cell cycle. So a normal healthy cell lives, does the thing, dies, gets destroyed, gets put out the body, and new cells are made. If that cell is getting, if that cell doesn't die and it gets damaged and shifts in metabolism or whatever, and it goes through cancer, cancer cells don't die, it is not going through apoptosis. So by increasing apoptosis, you are killing all those bad cells. In fact, if you, if you technically, if you can fast for 36 hours or more, it will literally flush out a lot of the cancer cells. Has anybody heard of, um, uh, has anybody heard of Dr. Um, Dan Poppa? He's really, he's, a, he's like the cellular detox guy. He's one of the doctors that helped create our initial cell detox protocols and stuff like that. Anyway, his wife healed from stage four cervical cancer with a 30 day fast. Okay, so it really increases apoptosis. Um, increases fat utilization and it decreases inflammation. So this is the benefits of intermittent fasting, okay? 
Now, what does or does not break your fast? Well, anytime you consume carbs, it'll break your fast, okay? So there's two different ways, and this is something that's important. You can either do this. You can either skip breakfast, which is typically the normal thing that people will do. They'll eat lunch and eat dinner, and then they don't eat again until lunch. That is a normal eight, 16 to eight hour, 16 slash eight fast. You, eight, you have eight hour window, okay? Now, some people like to eat food in the morning or you don't function very well, okay? So you might eat breakfast and lunch and skip dinner or have a really small dinner that will not break your fast, like a smoothie, okay? With no protein, it's a green smoothie, okay? Now, if you're, if you're missing breakfast, things like caffeine, like if you do black coffee, or you can technically, you can, you can even do bulletproof coffee because you can have MCT oil, butter, coconut oil, or whole cream even, and that will not break your fast. Fat does not break your fast. Okay, you can also use um, alcohol sweeteners like stevia, xylitol, or erythritol. Supplements do not break your fast, neither do these acids. So if you skip breakfast, you can have caffeine, which suppresses your appetite. And there's some other supplements I'll talk about that can help with fat utilization and decreasing your ghrelin. So ghrelin is a hormone that makes you hungry. It says, oh, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So if you ignore that, it goes away in like 15 minutes. Okay, it's okay. Okay, you ever been that where you're like, oh man, I'm really hungry, and you get to do something, you're like, oh God, and I didn't eat. Okay, that's because the ghrelin hormone turns off because it says, your brain's like, well, I'm not eating. Okay, you're not, you're not getting any food. And so then the body looks somewhere else for energy. Okay, um, questions about breaking the fast. Like what does or does not break your fast? So the apple cider vinegar in the morning does not break your fast. So if you did that every morning before, so I do that every morning before my coffee. So it's, it's like a rule, like I can't drink my coffee until I finish that. So when you were talking about, um, I think a, a green shake, mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about, the green powder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, doing that. Yeah, something, something like that. And I'll talk about the details. Yeah. I gotta start moving a little bit quicker. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So this is so okay. So next to intermittent fasting, the most important part is what you break your fast with. I cannot reiterate this, this, this enough. Fasting is good, intermittent fasting is great. If you break your fast with something terrible, like a carbohydrate meal, you are ruining everything. So what you break your fast with is almost more important than fasting itself. Who's ever heard breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Okay, so it's not the morning meal, it is the meal that breaks your fast. That's why they call it breakfast, is breaking your fast. Okay, so the most important thing to break your fast with is a really good high quality protein, and then I would do the green. So what I'm gonna recommend for everybody, if you want to start intermittent fasting, or you want to start losing weight or increasing insulin sensitivity, is you're going to do the greens and the protein smoothie to break your fast. This is also one of the reasons why I'm gonna really, really highly suggest you do this, because when you are crazy hungry, do you typically go for the good food or the bad food? It's so easy to do this intermittent fasting and then go and be like, oh, I'm starving. This sounds great. I'm hangry. Ah, potatoes. Yeah, and you eat way too much. Yeah, and so the, 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 and that's where people get in. That's where people start to say that intermittent fasting is bad because you just, you just, you just you consume way, way more than too many calories and it's bad food. So, okay. So I'm going to highly, highly recommend that you start to do the smoothie to break your fast and then maybe do lunch like 30 minutes later. You'll be less hungry, you'll go through your fast healthy. I'm still gonna recommend you do a healthy meal, but you're less likely to make a bad choice if you do this smoothie. Now, you can do it at noon, you can do it at nine o'clock. If intermittent fasting is new to you and you just are not fat adapted and you are a crazy BI whatever, <laughs> then maybe you break your fast at nine or 10. Or if you're doing really good, you can go till noon. Do you wanna do it like seven days a week? Like, is that what you would normally want to do? Or is like yeah. five days a week, like... Some is better than none, yeah. So five days is better than zero. Seven days is probably better than... Question. If you were to get up early, like mm -hmm. five, mm -hmm. and so four hours... When you I go guess, to bed. Um, like last night, about seven. So clearly, so like, your window of need. Yeah. Yeah, like, if you go to bed at seven... So, like, okay, okay. So I don't get home till like, seven or seven thirty. Yeah. So like my dinner is at like 8.30, sometimes. And so then it's like, eat, Ken's in bed, I go to bed. And so like I'm going to like noon or one. That's what I was gonna ask you, but it's like, doesn't it depend on what time you eat? Like the last meal or just what time you get in? Yeah. So you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Take only twenty four hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it just again, this is something you have to change. Like you, you can maybe you're done eating by six, and then you eat at nine thirty. I mean, it's just different for everybody. Or so instead of missing breakfast, maybe you miss dinner. I mean, that, so you, this can happen any kind of way. What you just what you what you don't want to do either though is let's say you're not gonna intermittent fast. One thing you have to cut out is snacking. Because if you're if you have food, even a healthy meal, you're increasing your insulin. And then lunch, increase your insulin. And then dinner, increase your insulin. Okay? But if you're like snacking in between, you're still getting these little bumps of insulin. So you're literally so the reason intermittent fasting is so good is because it allows your body to start burning fat for fuel. So you're using up your fat stores. Like people used to think, well, you eat all these tiny meals throughout the day, so your metabolism is constantly turned on. Well, the problem with that is you're never utilizing any of your stores for fuel because you're constantly giving your body fuel. Does that make sense? And so by not consuming fuel, you can eat your extra fuel. Now, if you have no extra fuel, then that's not a good idea. <laughs> but if you have extra fuel, then that just, just go for it. So, okay, so wait. So we have the plant protein, which I'm more of a fan of the whey protein, and there's a bone broth protein. Do we have bone broth protein in the box? So those are the two things. So if you have a real bad gut issue, I'd probably recommend, or if you have, th th there's no casein in this, like if you have gluten intolerant things, we can change our whey. Uh, but there's a bone broth protein that's a little bit more for people with gut issues or have dairy issues. But we have a plant bro uh, protein as well. I'm, I like the whey the most though, I have to admit. So then your greens, this is part of it. There's pills or the smoothie. I like the smoothie. It's it's chocolate, but um, I love chocolate. But anyway, this will help with detoxification as well. If you're going to start eating healthy, if you plan on burning fat, you have to. Everyone say have to. Have to. Everybody say it again. Have to. You have to detox the liver, or you will get fatty liver disease. And so one of the ways to detox is through increasing your dark green leafies, so that's why the greens are so important, okay? No one eats enough vegetables. I don't care who you are, how much vegetables you like, but that's where, again, that's why this supplement is so good. Okay, so increasing your exercise, so to increase your BMR, exercise is obviously critical. Now there's two types of workout, there's HIIT training and there's strength training. Now HIIT training is really important because it does help with metabolic rate and increasing that. However, it does release more stress hormones. So if you have high, high stress, then you might need to lean more towards just straight up the strength training. Now you can still do a lot of the same HIIT training movements, you're just toning down the intensity. Now there are some huge, uh, there, there are all sorts of reasons why people don't work out. Everybody pick out what their top two are. Okay, everybody shout their top one at once. One, two, three. Okay, I figure everybody's gonna have the same answer. Not even close. Anyway, so one of the best ways to reduce this is to do stuff like Max T3. Who's ever done Max T3? It is super efficient, it is pretty fun, but it's also getting rid of like the I don't know what to do, I don't know how to do it, and it's not a thousand dollar. I mean, if you've been to like Orange Theory or CrossFit, it's like 150 to 160 bucks a month per person. So Max T3 is $20, one time fee, you get all the access to your online modules. You can go through and program it however you want. So it's just, you just hook it on your TV and you follow along. You have an expert version, right? So this is where I would work out. And then you have your beginner version, and then you have your intermediate, uh, backwards, I'm sorry, experts in the middle. This is beginner. <laughs> That's not where I'm at. <laughs> and then you have your intermediate over here on the left. So like if you're really good at this movement, then you can maybe do this. But if you're not very good at this movement because you have a hurt ankle or a bum knee or a bad back, then maybe you'll do this movement. So there's modification. So you and the wifey or you and the kiddo or you and an Olympic athlete can be doing the same exact workout. My favorite part is the 12 minutes. Okay, so if your time is, if you are crazy time, 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 like you don't have enough time, don't have enough time, you have 12 minutes. I mean, that's, that's, that's just ridiculous. If you don't have 12 minutes, you need to reformulate your day. <laughs> All right, so if you, so okay, so, to, to, to correct your insulin sensitivity, you need to eat better. So advanced plan. Everybody okay with that? Okay. You need to start doing some movement. Okay, because you need to increase your, increase your caloric burn. You, increase your caloric burn. You have to be in a caloric deficit to lose body fat. You have to be in a caloric deficit. Okay. 
So one of the easiest ways to be to increase your core of D is to, to move more. Okay, so exercise, whether it's the max D3, or instead of doing a high intensity interval training, you're doing the same movements, but you're just doing it at a lower rate. So you're still doing push-ups, you're still doing body squats, you're still doing this. It's strength training. You don't have to go to a gym and throw 300 pounds on your squat rack. Okay, you can literally just do resistance training at home with hardly any equipment. Okay, but if you need a little bit of extra help or you're just, you, you want a little, I hate to say easy button, because it's not, but anyway, the metabolic burn does help to oxidize fat. So it helps your body easily burn fat for fuel. Now guess what it will not work if, this will not work if what is high? Yeah, or it'll have a harder time working. Does that make sense? So metabolic burn is going to help push you forward. I mean, everybody likes fast results, yes or yes? Okay, does everybody work better when you see results quickly? Okay, so this might be something you want to do. Now with that is the L-carnitine, okay? The L-carnitine, it helps to oxidize fat for fuel. There is some carnitine in the metabolic burn. This is just a little bit more of a boost, okay? So this is, again, if, you're, if you have a big weight loss goal, like if you want to lose 20 or 30 pounds over the next 30 to 60 days, then you might want to get like the, the, the bigger bundle. Um, and then stress. So when I said you cannot burn fat if you have high levels of insulin, you can also not burn fat if your cortisol levels are high. Okay, so stress management is, uh, is kind of important. But one of the best things if you cannot get rid of stress, because sometimes you can't get rid of stress, yes or yes? Okay, so you have to increase your stress threshold. And one of the best things to increase your stress threshold is your ashwagandha. Who's ever heard of ashwagandha? It is an adaptogen herb. And so the max fit is a really good supplement if your stress levels are high or you know you have elevated cortisol levels, okay? It'll help to minimize those cortisol levels as well as your insulin to make it, again, easier for you to stay in your fat burning mode. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, if you have blood sugar instability, like if you know you're real crazy moody and you need some help with maintaining the healthy blood sugar levels, uh, chromium chelate, or chelate or whatever is really, really good to help with that, especially if you're like pre-diabetic-ish, okay? So really important. Now, I'm gonna fly through this part, okay? But this is not any less important, um, but we have to minimize toxins. If you are exposed to or consume toxins, this is crazy. If you consume toxins, it is like disease through the roof. Does anybody know like, toxins cause cancer, yes or yes? yes? Like toxins are deadly, okay? But your body has a defense mechanism because your body is incredibly smart. Everyone say incredibly smart. Incredibly smart. smart. It's so smart that it sequesters these toxins and puts them into fat cells to protect you. Now, if you're consistently exposed to those toxins, your body will alter its DNA expression to create more fat cells. It's kind of hard to lose weight when your body's DNA is working against you, yes or yes? So if your genetic expression is to, to create massive amounts of fat cells to protect you from toxins, then I don't care how good your nutrition exercise is, if you're gonna be weight loss resistant. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, Dr. Brett, he is full of crap. I mean, everything he said, nothing's happening. It's because you're toxic, okay? Your body is so smart. So we have to remove toxins. So specifically things like endocrine disruptors. Who's ever heard of a, a estrogen mimicker? Okay, estrogen mimicker or endocrine disruptor. Xenoestrogen or phenoestrogen. These are examples of xenoestrogen. BPA, which is from water bottles, that's why you have to drink out of, right? Stuff like this. Dioxin, itrazine, phthalates. Uh, I mean, you, the list goes on. Flame retardants, lead, arsenic, mer mer mercy. I guess that's supposed to say mercury. Uh, I know, right? Uh, Glycoethers. So again, it's just, I would say the number one source is obviously from stuff like food, like all the, all the preservatives, sodium benzoate, all these different things. So you want to make sure, like all the food colorings, all these sort of things. But a lot of it too is in just your personal hygiene stuff. Sorry, ladies, like it's kind of crazy. I mean, there's, I mean, I, I don't know how well you can read any of this, but like, 
shampoo, 15 different chemicals, eyeshadow, six, lipstick, 33, perfume, 250. Has anybody noticed that I do not wear deodorant? No. You have noticed no. that? <laughs> no, I need like a pull. Has anybody been like, Dr. Brett kind of stunk today? No one's ever noticed that? No. Just Dr. Jill, huh? <laughs> the girls send them, you guys are just nice. I don't wear deodorant either, and I don't wear cologne because they're estrogen mimickers. Now, yes, they'll cause your body's inability to store or to burn fat, but you know what else they do? Estrogen mimickers, guys, destroy your testosterone. If you are putting anything on that has a scent or an estrogen mimicker, perfume, Guys, stop wearing perfume, first of all. <laughs> cologne, don't judge me. <laughs> Deodorant, cologne, aftershave, sh the shampoo you're using, the soap you're using, the, the shaving cream you're using, whatever it is, if it has a scent to it, your new car smell, if it has a scent to it, the candles that the white people are burning or whatever, like it is an estrogen mimicker, it is robbing you of your testosterone, it is taking your man's heart. Okay? All right, so uh, fake tan 22. Anyway, there's 475 different chemicals in just what they just put on the board there. So metabolic detoxification. So there are certain things that you can do to help detoxify yourself. So this is a really good one, right? Increasing your dark green leafies. Also stuff like lemon water in the morning, great detoxifier. Increasing your water in general is a great detoxifier. Um, but sometimes you need help. Sometimes water is not enough. Sometimes those toxins get stuck in your fat cells. Sometimes they get stuck in your brain cells. Sometimes they get stuck in all sorts of different cells, tissue cells. And so the detox system is really kind of a unique system. And one of the reasons I like it the most is because it works in two ways. It is a cell detox, which has your tr traditional organ detoxifiers like chlorella, milk thistle, dandelion root extract. It has all the precursors to glutathione, which is the body's master antioxidant. So it is really, really good at pulling all the toxins out of the cell. And then the body detox works synergistically to bind to those toxins to help safely remove them out of the system. Now, when someone thinks of a detox or a cleanse, what, what are you most afraid of? Sitting in the bathroom the whole day. Like it's just, this is not, this is a, this is a whole food supplement. This is not a forced cleanse, this is, got, this is giving your body what it needs to naturally detox, which is giving it extra assistance, the extra things it needs to have to help detox. But once you pull those toxins out of the fat cells, guess what starts to happen? Even just by detoxing, your fat cells will start to shrink. Okay, now I'm also gonna say this, if you plan on losing weight, like if you really plan on re reducing body fat, you have to detox or you're going to damage your liver and you're gonna create a fatty liver. Okay, so you have to make sure you're detoxing. So this is the kickstart, this is the metabolic kickstart bundle. If you were going to just do one thing with your nutrition and your intermittent fasting, this is where I want you to start. This is like level one, okay? It's the greens and the detox, and you should have a sheet that has like the, the bundles on it. That, 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 that. It should look like this, there's a front and back, okay? All right, so that's level one. And you can do the plant, or you can do the whey protein, or you can do the bone broth protein. The detox kind of works. You take the cell detox in the morning, an hour or 30 minutes before breakfast, and you'll take the body detox an hour after you eat. So I take the last, I actually have these in my bathroom. So when I wake up in the morning, take my cell detox before I go do my outside vinegar or before I do my coffee. And you can take it with coffee or the outside vinegar, okay? And then I have it in my bathroom, so after I'm done with dinner, I'm getting ready for bed, it's right there. Boom, I can take my body detox. Last thing I do before I go to sleep. Okay, so, because it's just an hour outside, an hour window, it's kind of annoying. Yeah, okay, I thought so anyway. Now level two though, so if, yeah, if you're gonna do level one, but you really want a little bit of, of, of the added benefit of the, the kickstart, the, 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 the acceleration to the fat burning, the fat metabolism, or if you just have a really good weight loss goal, I want you to add in a metabolic burn to max fit. If your stress levels are high, or if you know you have insulin resistance, or insulin insensitivity, you want to increase your insulin sensitivity, then do level two, which is the metal bar burn and the max fit. Those are the things you want to add. And then the third, if you're just going all in, and you have a huge weight loss goal, and you know you have blood sugar instability issues because you're super grumpy, and you know that because you tried intermittent fasting, then level three is that L-carnosine and the chromium helix. 
the, does everybody make sense? Those are three levels of engagement. Level one is just the supplements and the detox, or the, 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 uh, the, the smoothie and the detox, okay? And then you have the metabolic burn uh, with the max fit for the stress hormones. And then the, the third one is your uh, L-carnitine, which is the fat oxidation and the chromium chelate, which is for the blood sugar. What were your questions? Does level three include everything from the Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. level one, and then you add two, and then you, you add two. Okay. Does that make sense? Questions about that? <coughs> Hopefully you kind of have an idea of where you're at on what level you should be on. Okay, so real quickly, because I'm running out of time, we'll start adjusting here in about 15 minutes. Is everybody cool if I go like another 10 minutes? Yeah. You okay with that? Okay. So if you have a gut issue, then we have to address your gut. Now here's really cool. If you do the advanced plan and you remove all the toxins, guess what's going to typically happen? Your gut's going to start to heal. The body's created to heal. Uh, yes or yes? Yes. Yeah. But you have to remove the damage. You have to remove the damage or the body can't heal. So you have to eliminate all the things that are damaging the gut and then you have to start adding in what's gonna help the body repair. It's called the three R's. Remove, restore, repair. Remove, restore, repair. You remove the damage. All the toxins, the bad foods, the sugars, okay? The bad oils. Remove the damage. Repair or restore now, technically, that means we're talking about your nervous system, okay? Because if I had a dead body right here, the supplements don't heal their gut. What heals your gut? It is your light. It's the power. It's the spark. Yes or yes? It is called innate intelligence. Everyone say innate. Innate, innate intelligence is what heals a cut on your arm. Like, you don't have to sit there and think, like, okay, cut. Let's do your thing. Cells build. And it's not the supplement, like it's not Neosporum, it's not the Neosporum you put on the cut that heals the cut, right? It is your body's innate intelligence. The only difference between you, me, and a corpse is they're missing the innate intelligence. True or true? Yes. Okay, so restore means to remove interference in your nerve system so the body can heal at a higher level. Does it make sense? Okay, and then obviously three is the re uh, uh, repair, which is going to be adding in the healthy foods for your body to rebuild itself. Because your body is a building. If you give your body really good building material, then you have a healthy building. If you're giving your body bad material, you build a bad building. Yes or yes? Yeah. Okay. So if you have a gut issue, if you know that my problem is a gut issue, not a thyroid issue, I feel like it's a gut issue, then this is a more specific gut healing bundle. Okay? You can kind of go through that, or you can talk to the girls about that afterwards. But this is specifically for healing the gut. Okay? Leaky gut, chronic inflammation. Can I add one thing? What's up? Most of your serotonin is produced in your gut. So yeah, 95%. Issues with depression. Yep. And yep. It Neuro makes a real difference. Neurotransmitters are created in the gut. So, a bad gut even leads to all sorts of crazy stuff like depression, anxiety, because your gut function up. I mean, we, I do entire seminars on gut health. In fact, we did one not too long ago in the closed Facebook group. Okay, and this is one of the, 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 the solutions that we gave, but yeah, you're right. If you have like depression, anxiety, or you know someone who's had stuff like that, it's a gut issue. Yeah. Cerebroculitis. Cerebroculitis, gotta get the gut, it's just chronic inflammation. Yeah. Okay, so then thyroid. Who, has, who knows anyone with a thyroid issue? Or assume they, 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 they say they have a thyroid issue. So this is gonna be more specific for thyroid, but some of the symptoms are fatigue, increased sensitivity, cold, weight gain, or the inability to lose weight. Puppet face didn't inherit depression and impaired memory. So this is gonna be more of a specific thyroid type bundle with the added thyroid plus, which I couldn't I couldn't change the picture. Because this promagnesium is a different, it's, it's, they, we've corrected some of the stuff so we made it better. And then the thyroid plus is the, what that bundle is. But again, like when it comes to either the gut health or the thyroid, you can see the number one thing is to do what? Correct your nerve system. Because if someone has damage to their nerve system in their neck, like a loss of curvature, and there's pressure on the nerve going to the thyroid, you can do all the supplements, change all your nutrition in the world, it doesn't heal your thyroid. Okay? Because if I cut the nerve to your thyroid, what happens to your thyroid? Instantly shuts off. If I cut all the nerve to your arm, your arm shuts off. If I cut all the nerve to your heart, your heart instantly shuts off. Now, is that a belief or is that a fact? It's a fact. It's a fact. It's just a law of anatomy. 
So instead of a cut nerve, there's a misalignment because you had a computer all day, or you were in a, a little fender bender when you were 16 years old, or you put a kid on your head, or you did whatever, if there's a misalignment in your spine, just stressing the nerve even just a little bit, is your thyroid gonna function 100%? No, so it's gonna slowly dysfunction, it's gonna slowly shut down. It's not gonna die instantly, it's gonna slowly shut down. So correcting your nervous system is number one, advanced plant nutrition, and then obviously adding in that bundle. So this is just kind of an example of what I was just talking about. For patients in the room, what's wrong with that neck x-ray? No curvature. There's no curve. What's happening? Where's the thyroid at? Everyone point to the thyroid. Guess where these nerves go? Negative two degree curve. There's supposed to be symptoms underneath this. You can see that, but headaches, fatigue issues, weight loss resistance issues, digestive issues. This is what this person had coming into the office. Okay. But she had tried keto, she had tried this, she had tried that. I mean, she was, she said she tried everything. And she was on thyroid medication, you name it, but she'd never had her nerve system checked. So thank God one of our patients was like, you've got to get in here, you've got to get that looked at. You've tried everything else, you've got to get to see if your nerve system is damaged. So she goes in. Now, the crazy part about it is she'd ever she'd been to a chiropractor before. Who'd ever been to a chiropractor before me? Yeah. So did they do x-rays? Sometimes, not a lot of times. Did they talk about your nerve system? Did they do specific corrective adjustments or corrective rehab? Did they do re-x-rays to see the correction taking place? No, it was just, where does it hurt? Let me crack it. Right? Where does it hurt? Let me pop it. Oh, it feels a little bit better. And they help with back pain. I'm not saying that those kind of those pain management chiropractors don't help with back pain, but it's not really correcting the issue. It's not, it's definitely not getting pressure off the nerve system so the body can heal. So getting in, getting adjusted, we were able to correct her cervical curve by almost 50% pressure coming off the nerve system. So guess what started happening to her thyroid? It started to be healed. And then we started to do the nutrition stuff. And then we started doing the right supplementation. Then we started doing stuff like intermittent fasting. And I mean, she lost like 50 pounds because healthy people get to healthy weight. It wasn't like a weight loss secret or something we were doing that was just for weight loss. It was we were trying to get the body so healthy that it was at a healthy weight. Does that make sense of difference? Because you can do a crazy diet and lose weight. I mean, there's who's ever heard about like the Hollywood cookie diet? or the Taco Bell diet. I mean, there's all sorts of insane diets out there. Yes or yes? Yeah. And you can lose weight on some of these diets, but we don't want to lose weight just to end up in a lighter coffin. We want to lose weight because healthy bodies are at a healthy weight. Does, does that make sense? The difference in that is we want to get healthy and the weight loss is just a byproduct. Getting healthy, not getting cancer, just a byproduct. Getting healthy, having higher energy higher vitality, being able to do stuff. That's what it's about. Warning signs if there are supplementation. So, I mean, most of you guys here in the office are, are patients, and, and you probably came in because maybe you had something in the beginning, like a symptom that you wanted help with. But I mean, how many people, how many of your friends have you tried to get in the office that like are still like hesitant on chiropractic? Don't stop trying because you have no idea when you say something that might trigger them to finally want to come in, finally get checked, finally get results, and finally have their life change. And the rest of their life could be significantly altered because you didn't give up on them. In fact, that patient that I kind of showed you, if I remember correctly, the patient that tried to refer them in had tried to bring them to 19 different talks. 19. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, you think most of us would give up after the first one or two. <laughs> but when you care about someone and you truly know that this is a place where people can come to get healthy and to heal, why would you stop? They're just not ready yet. And finally, after that 19 times, she came in and she committed, right? She started taking care of her health. She committed to her health. And she had this amazing life transformation that the rest of her life is going to be true drastically different. What if that person would have gave up after number 10, right? So don't give up. And I will say this though, it's not your job to teach them about chiropractic. That's my job. Your job is just get them through an event. Refer them in the office from 
one of those special VIP talks, and you can pass some of those out. But we just have no idea how much of an impact that something could have. Could have. Or you have maybe you have no idea how desperate they are. I mean, this is this sharing health stuff it, it is, is, is difficult because it's, it, it creates a lot of transparency and a lot of vulnerability, as you're saying. And, and we don't know what they're going through or the, what their family's going through. If we just keep inviting them or just keep giving them invitations, who knows when that one time is gonna be like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna come with you. I, I, I'm finally ready to do this, or I want to leave, or maybe I'm a little interested, and they show up and they just have this amazing life transformation just because you were bringing them, right? You guys are the heroes. You have the potential to do this. So if you know someone has anything stuff, anything like this, then let's get them in because these are all just warning signs that there's bigger issues underneath. And I'll use headaches as an example. Who's ever had a headache before? How many people know someone who has headaches? <laughs> the majority of people, would not, I'm, I'm not talking about just the migraine people, this is a whole separate conversation, but just people who just like get what they call normal headaches. Who, who knows what I'm talking about? Oh, just normal headaches. I think it's just normal headaches. If they think it's no big deal because they take a Tylenol or an ibuprofen, then what happens to the headache? It goes away, and they think they're what? Okay. They think they're better, they think they're okay. Or their back hurts, and they take their medication, and it goes away, and they think they're better. They think it's just the normal stuff. But it's not, there's underlying damage, and the headache is just a warning sign. If you cover up the warning sign, the damage gets worse. It's like the check engine light. I don't think anybody would see that check engine light come on and put black tape over the light and continue <laughs> to drive. Or just crank the music up because you hear a weird noise coming from the engine. Like most people wouldn't do that. And if you do do it, you know that it's just gonna get what? And like a $50 issue is gonna turn into a $5,000 issue, true, true. So if someone has stuff like headaches, or acid reflux, or constipation, or sleep issues, or fatigue, or neck issues, or numb, uh, 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 sciatica, numb continuing high blood pressure, all those things are just warning signs that there is subluxation, that there is stress and there is damage. And if we don't get to the root cause of that, it's only going to get worse. And it's gonna make a bigger deal, a bigger issue, and just create more disease. But we have the ability to help stop it, okay? So every event, I'm gonna encourage you, number one, to come, because you're gonna learn a lot. Number two, is just consistently try to bring people with you because we have no idea how impactful they could be in their life. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. brainwash that the medical paradigm has created. I mean, that's one of the biggest things. I mean, so max living is the five essentials. You know, essential number one used to be max mind. Like we used to have them in a different order because of that. Because you have to shift the way you think about health before you can really do a lot of other stuff. So the way that people think about health is insane. They think that they have to go to the doctor. They think they have to get a label. Like that's what's crazy. So in the health world, it doesn't matter what the label is. We're trying to build a body healthy. What it's called doesn't really matter. In fact, the word diagnosis means you and I don't know. Two people died, don't know. Diagnosis, don't know. You and I don't know. Diagnosis, what's the meaning? You and I don't know. And the doctor just keeps guessing and keeps digging, tries to try and label because the only way that they can treat you is by labeling you, and the only way they can do that is by giving you a drug. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what it's called. What we need to do is just work on getting healthy. Does, does that make sense? Like, I don't mean to oversimplify, but it, it's just, it's about getting healthy, not fighting disease. So, uh, again, like, again, if someone comes in the office, the first step is to do evaluation and exam x-rays, right? We have that $20 special stuff going on. I'll send you guys home with some VIP cards. If, if someone in your mind is coming to you, we'll give you some VIP cards. If you've never been checked in the office, typically what we'll do is we do an evaluation and exam and full spine digital x-rays to really find what the actual underlying cause, where the pressure on the nervous system is. Well, those thermal imaging, in fact, if you ever go to the medical doctor and get like full spine orthopedic tests, full spine digital x-rays, neurological exams, and a consultation, what do you think that would cost? $33,000. Easily, <laughs> easily. I mean, crazy expensive, yes or yes? Yeah. So in our office, it's around like 290 bucks, but we always do those VIP specials. We do $29 new patient fees because I truly do not want a financial objection to get in the way of somebody figuring out what could be going on. 
Because if we can find an underlying cause and come up with a really clear solution, it's a lot easier just removing that financial barrier makes it really easy to figure out what's going on, true or true. So we do that $29 special. So action steps, the 30 day challenge. So what the 30 day challenge entails is a progress picture and you have to post it. I'm just kidding, everybody. I got it, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I will encourage you to do progress pictures. I don't, I'm not really keen on posting them in the closed group unless afterwards you have this amazing transformation then we'll let you post it because we want to encourage people. But take a progress picture, that way you can see yourself change. Is that okay? Okay. Um, you're gonna do at least one protein shake and that's how you're gonna break your fast. You're gonna do your supplementation. Again, it does not break your fast. Um, you're gonna do two advanced plan meals per day or one if you're gonna do a smoothie, okay? Um, you're gonna drink half your body weight analysis. We're gonna do one, I know it says 45 minute workout. You're just gonna do one workout per day with a minimum of five workouts per week. And I'm only saying that because Monday and Wednesdays is very hard for me to work out. <laughs> okay, so at least five days a week. You're gonna do a max T3 or some version of it, okay? Uh, max T3 is only 12 minutes long, so the rest of the workout time, if your goal is to try to do 30 or 40 minutes, is either some strength training or stretching or mobility work or going for a walk. And I always say this, just walking by itself does not count. And you need to be able to kind of sweat or get your heart rate up a little bit. Now, here's my disclaimer. If your medical doctor says you can't work out, you can't elevate your heart rate, then it is what it is. But the idea is to get the body moving. Um, and if you can't get your heart rate up because of medical issues, then maybe just doing some resistance training like straight push-ups and then you rest and your heart rate gets elevated. Does that make sense? Any questions about the workout part of that? I will post more some more stuff on that though. Um, you're gonna maintain your chiropractic adjustments and you're gonna increase your home care because I know everyone's slacking, so there's your reminder. <laughs> No alcohol or cheat meals. No, no, that's the, that's the only objection. All right. And then uh, the idea is, yeah. you still have your coffee, yes. Okay, good. Uh, and then the, uh, I guess I, I need to make sure that works the last slide. Well, what's the same page as the reading? So reading. So the goal is to, to, for this challenge, the goal is to add some reading. I would recommend it be uh, some per personal growth stuff, but I will be posting in the challenge um, videos. So if you're not a big reader or you don't know what to read or you don't know where to buy a book or what to start with, I'm going to be posting video, I'm going to be posting book summaries. So I will allow that to count. Okay? Or you can read speak two pages of the Bible. I mean, if you already do stuff like that, that counts. Fair enough? Questions? No questions? I'm just nervous up here. <laughs> so it's just for me? And this is why, and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna highly suggest that you add MCT oil to that, to make sure you're getting enough healthy fats. Because the shake has a lot of nutrients. I know it's not very many calories, and you'll put yourself in a big calorie deficit, and you have to make sure you're consuming enough healthy fats. Because what you cannot do is do a low calorie, or a low carb diet with not enough healthy fats, or you will ruin your metabolism. And you'll feel like crap. So you have to make sure you're increasing your healthy fats. So adding that MCT oil to your smoothies or something. Could you also add healthy fats? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Healthy fats, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, no, you shouldn't do this. Yeah. <laughs> We're uh, pregnant. Protein will increase your insulin, it will break your fast, yeah. but the greens will not break so your fast. It's just your greens, not your shake. Just yes. the greens. If you wanted to so add no that in. No collagen either. No collagen either. I saw that because I've been putting yeah. collagen yeah. plus coffee. Yeah. yeah. It breaks your fast. It breaks your fast. Yeah, because it's a protein. <laughs> uh, the most important success factor you are on the average is my people you spend your most time with. This is also one of the reasons why I love doing these talks or I want to create these closed groups on social media is because the more people that we're around or we interact with are on the same journey, the easier it is to do. That's why church has so much success with small groups is because you're surrounding yourself with similar people that are on the same path as you and it helps bring you up versus bring you down. Okay? No negative Nancy's. Okay, that's all I got for
be good. Okay, questions? I can, I'm, I'm, yeah? It is the best kind of bread, but it will still break your fast. It technically has gluten in it as well. So you yeah. Um, the diesel bread is the best bread, um, but it does have gluten and it. it's not on the advanced menu. It is a, uh, it is a stone ground. So if you're reading the ingredients and it says like whole wheat flour, bad. So Ezekiel bread doesn't say flour. It's a, um, gosh dang, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, that's, Ezekiel bread is, but it doesn't have gluten in it. It's just sweet. Yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. Any other questions? Okay, make sure you know which uh, supplement bundle you guys are gonna get. And if you are interested in doing the challenge, how are we putting them into the group? I have a right sign-up sheet up here. Okay, there's a sign up to get into the closed challenge group. Okay, <laughs> now I'll say this. If you are right now thinking that you don't want to do the challenge because you don't know you can commit 30 days hard, just sign up. There is no purpose. This is not 75 days hard where if you screw up just once, you're start all over. The idea is to try to do a little bit better. So if you know you have a party that you gotta go to where you're probably gonna have a drink, it is what it is. Just just limit it to that one night though, okay? Or if you know you're gonna be at a birthday party and there might be some cake there and, and you know you can't do I mean I'm gonna try don't don't eat it. But if you're going to, don't let that ruin the 30 days. Like just go back at it, right? It's not about like don't beat yourself up if you have a weak moment. The try the goal is to just do a little bit less or a little bit better. Make sense? Okay, so everybody should sign up for that. If you don't, I'm gonna know exactly who you are. <laughs> um, other than that, let me know if you have any questions. Make sure you pick up your supplement bundles and stuff like that. Cool? cool. Um, also, too, do, did we have to figure out how many of these we have? Oh, no, but I can do Okay, so we have the quick start guide to the nutrition, so the advanced plan, as well as the recipe book. So you, you know what to cook and how to keep cook. There's lots of uh, uh, information online, too, like on our webpage, as far as recipes. Okay, or more information on the advanced plan, and I'll be consistent and post some good stuff on there too, especially if you guys have more questions, and I'll see you come up with content. Cool? Yes. All right.